I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for Royal Romance Book 2, Chapter 17, Cordonia Bound. It's the morning after your big night in New York, and everyone is gathered around the breakfast table on the Royal Train. I'm glad we're finally going back to Cordonia. New York was fun, but it'll be nice to stop sleeping in hotels. Not to mention on trains. Yeah, it's too bad we couldn't fly straight home. You said there was some kind of security issue with the last leg of the flight, Liam? Probably nothing to worry about, but when the Royal Guard voices concern, I find it best to listen to them. Holy crap, I have a new outfit. <laughs> Taking the train was mostly a precaution. I promise we'll all be home in Cordonia soon enough. Catch Liam's eye across the table as everyone enjoys their breakfast. Glancing around at all your friends, he gives you a questioning look and you nod. Actually, before we arrive, Riley and I have something we wanted to tell you all. Um, Liam, you do the honors. As you wish. Liam looks at you with such warmth that you can't help smiling at him. Last night, I asked Riley to marry me. And to my great joy, she said yes. Whoa. It takes Drake a moment to meet your eyes. That's, uh... Congrats, you two. Riley, that's incredible news. Wow. What did he say? Like, what did you say? Congratulations are in full uh, first. Uh... Questions can wait until later. I'm happy for you both. <laughs> Olivia, thank you, that means a lot. I thought you'd be mad at me. Thank you, that means a lot. And simply the truth, Madeline never deserved Liam, but you at least are an improvement. If this is what you want, Liam, how can I begrudge you for finding happiness? Thank you, Olivia. I'm sure you all have question, more questions, but you have no idea! But unfortunately, I must take my leave for all of you for now. The press will be waiting when we arrive at the palace, and I have a few notes to prepare. They'll probably want to hear from Riley, too, after what happened at the wedding shower. I'd better get ready myself. Oh, and what better way to get ready, then spin a bunch of diamonds on a dress you don't really need. As you scan the contents of the train's boutique, there's a knock on the door. Uh, Bertrand told me you had a, a important tea to tea with a Liam last night. Justin, you're still here? I wasn't sure you'd stick around after Tarek's statement. Bertrand hired me to get you through the homecoming ball, so until then, you've got me in your corner. The, which is good news, since every reporter in Cordonia is going to want a word with you now that Liam has called off his engagement. They'll be circling you like sharks until they get a story. Any suggestions for handling the press? Step one is this. He holds out a familiar headset. Oh, Christ. It's only when it's convenient for you folks. Old Faithful. As for step two... That depends on where you and Lee, King Liam stand. I hate to pry, but it's better for me to help you formulate a response than let the press tear it out of you. Well, if you have to know, we're engaged. Ha <laughs> ha, so that's why you've been walking on air since we left New York. I had a feeling. More than anything else, the press will want to know what kind of queen you're going to be. I know you're on cloud nine, but be sure to take their concerns seriously take everything seriously should be the motto of this court. Ha, huh, maybe Liam can make it official. And now we've got to take care of step three. Your look. Oh, oh, Pixelberry, really? You spend a few minutes sitting, sifting through the racks of clothing until Justin picks out the makings of an outfit. I'm getting a good feeling about this combo. Isn't that personal preference and that's just yours, which you inherently are representative of Pixelberry? He hands you a sleek purple blazer paired with a blouse and a fashionably weathered jeans. This looks a lot like the blazer Liam was wearing earlier. Oh, 
Well, I see what you did there. You're engaged to a king of Cordonia now. We want to play up that association as frequently and subtly as we can. Uh, but screw the torn jeans, right? You know, we got look the lookings of a bell around your neck and a little like it may, looks like made out of yarn here, and you know it's just a purple blazer. Or we can just go with what I would consider better. <clears throat> and yes, the music's cut out. I'll update you guys at the end of the video. It'll be back here shortly, trust me. I'd rather keep it simple today. Suit yourself. You're the one who has to be in front of the cameras. You hear the train's whistle blow. The sound of it rattles the windows as you rush over to look outside. We're here. Battle stations, Riley. Good luck. Pretty much Pixelberry fixed the app, in case you didn't know. <clears throat> Never mind the fact that they were fighting with me for over a week and saying, Yeah. And the text finally came out and go, Uh huh. N moving on, you step off the train, find a motorcade ready to carry you, the court, and King Liam through the streets of Cordonia. Reporters swarm the motorcade as soon as I reach the palace. Cameras flash around you as you follow Liam out into the sunlight. You casually switch on your earpiece so Justin can listen in. A photo op? Easy, just play it cool and collect it. I should... Smile and wave. Put on your most dignified smile despite the many flash bulbs going off among the crowd. An elegant entrance by Lady Riley and King Liam. Oh god, this crap. Once the last of the camera flashes subside, the reporters with microphones begin the lobbing questions of Liam. Welcome back, your majesty, to Cordonia. How does it feel to be home? I didn't know where I was coming. Thank you for confirming it was Cordonia. <laughs> Thank you all for the warm welcome. It is wonderful to be home among the people once again. That's right, it's called improv. <laughs> I'm not doing this. <clears throat> there are rumors that you've broken off your engagement with Countess Madeline of Fidelia. Can you comment on that? Countess Madeline and I are no longer engaged, that is true. For my reasons were personal, but she comported herself with dignity and honor throughout our tour together. I wish her only happiness for the future. You hear integrated murmurs among the crowds. The questions and cameras turn to you next. Oh, shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Composed. <clears throat> Dignify. Oh, <Whew. laughs> yeah. Lady Riley, we've all seen Lord Tarek Stairman on the news. Now that the truce has come out and King Liam is newly single, are there any chances of you becoming the next queen in waiting? Uh, there is, in fact. Oh, he answered for us. He holds out his hand to you, and you take it, stepping up beside him. King Liam and I are betrothed. Oh, you're all shocked, aren't you? Wow! One reporter drops her microphone and scrambles to pick it up again, while those nearby stare at you and Liam in amazed silence. Finally, the shock fades, and as cheers and whispers begin to break out, the cameras start to flash. Every person holding one tries to get a shot of you beside Liam. Yes, Lady Riley has done me the honor of accepting my proposal. In addition, she will soon be elevated to the rank of Duchess, poor the Cadonian tradition that a queen-to-be must hold her own land. It's quite an honor to bestow, Your Majesty. Lady Riley, I have to ask, as a relative newcomer to the court, do you think you're ready to shoulder the responsibilities of a duchess? Really? Of course you're ready to handle the responsibility. Questions these days. All right, translate. Um, this is a big deal for Cordonia. Assure them that it's a big deal for you. Is it going to be timed? Phew, okay. Am I ready? I'm prepared to shoulder my new responsibilities. I might be new to Cordonia, but I've been through a lot in my time here. Whatever obstacles being a duchess has in store, I'll face them like I faced everything else. Anna, I think she's got me rooting for. 
I look forward to seeing what you do with your new station, Lady Riley. So do I. Thank you both for speaking with us. Of course. Good day to you all. It, that was it? I was hoping just hard-hitting questions like, Hey, you know, how long has this secret affair been going on? We know that Dan wanted like something other than... Okay. And good day to you, Riley. Good work satisfying the masses. Over and out. Reporters snap their final pho photographs as King Liam waves to the press and escort you inside. <laughs> A hive of active activity greets you inside the palace. You see half a dozen security guards stationed throughout the main hall, all trying to stay out of the way of the household staff. You handled yourself wonderfully out there. I think at this point I could do a press conference in my sleep. <laughs> now that I'd like to see. Is everything all right in here? Like, I've never seen this palace this busy. There are always adjustments when the court returns from an extended tour, no matter how much notice where you've given the staff. Although, speaking of adjustments, I was hoping you would join the royal family for lunch. Meaning you and the king, father, and queen mother? Yes. Since I told them that we're engaged, they wish to speak with Cordonia's future queen. Things have been fraught between us ever since I learned the truth about what my father did to you. Yeah, it's probably not fun sharing the meals with a guy who tried to ruin my future in Cordonia. Indeed. However, it would mean a great deal to me if you dined with us. Despite my father and Regina's fault, they both have years of ruling experience to share. Liam, I'd be happy to come. I'll do it you, who am I turn to? I'd be happy to come. If it's important to you, how could I say no? Thank you, Riley. I hoped you would understand. Liam guides you through the many halls of the palace, finally stopping at a pair of double doors. A servant opens them and reveals Constantine and Regina already seated inside. I'm just... No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make the joke. Nope, nope, nope. Dignity. Confidence. <clears throat> Lady Riley, thank you for joining us. Constantine adjusts his collar before meeting your gaze. Yes, I believe we all have business to discuss. Your Majesties, thank you for the invitation. If I'm going to be part of the royal family, I want us to be on civil terms. I know. We've both known and just how important you are to Liam for quite some time. I would like us to get along. She looks at her husband expectantly. Constantine bows his head to you, his voice grave. I appreciate your pragmatism, Lady Riley. It will certainly make this transition easier. Please have a seat. Liam pulls out a chair besides Regina for you. As soon as he sits down across from you, servants begin bringing out an assortment of elaborate dishes. And the first... Liam breaks off when Constantine suddenly begins to call. Liam and Regina turn to him, but Constantine smiles wanely and gestures for Liam to continue. The first point we should discuss, Lady Riley, is the name of your new duchy. Does it not have one? No, it does. Traditionally, it has been known as the Valtoria. However, according to Cordonian law, a new duchess or duke may change the name upon claiming the duchy's lands. The choice is yours. No, I'm gonna keep it the same. No point in fixing something that's not broken. Liam nods in assent. He smiles at you as you help yourself to the dishes on the table. Valtori's name has been honored throughout the Cordonian history. I'm glad it will still have a place in this kingdom. As the Duchess of Valtoria, then, Cordonia's future queen, you'll be taking on a great deal of responsibility. Ordinarily, such a role is something you are prepared for since birth. Given your background, however, you have a great deal of catching up to do. I think we'll be just fine. 
I'm curious, Lady Riley, what do you consider a Duchess's primary duty to be? My first duty? It's wearing only the finest and largest hats! What the f is up with you people in hats? Okay, so... <clears throat> I really hate royalty. Did I mention that? <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna warm up the hands, you know? Bit chilly today. It went from 50s to boom, it's already 20 out. I'm like, wow. I'm supposed to go down to like below zero. So yeah, the temp's been dropping fairly quick. Um. I w I'm, I'm stuck in between one and three. I'm gonna go with one, as to govern fairly and justly. A wise place to start. An even-handed rule will show the people that you can be trusted to make impartial decisions. They will look to you for guidance in times of strife and expect you to support them in times of peace. You must never forget your decisions will impact many lives than your own. Unfortunately, you are gaining more than more mere responsibility. Meaning what? <clears throat> We've spoken of Cordonia's enemies before. Your new position is likely to attract their attention, one way or another. Those without power are always interested in those who hold it. The power re recently gained often appears the easiest to seize. Should I be worried? I have already taken steps to ensure your continued safety, Riley. Several royal guards will look out for you for the time being, but you'll have personal security detail as soon as I can arrange it. Though, of course, I hope you'll never need such a measure. Wow. Um, I get my own bodyguards. Yes! I mean, I'm glad you're looking out for me, Liam. Of course. Despite past intrusions, he shoots a significant look at his father. I want you to always feel safe in Cordonia, and I want it to feel like home. Some personal security definitely won't hurt. You get through the rest of lunch in near silence, though Liam's sympathetic g glances help ease the tension. As you finish the last of your food, he turns to Constantine and Regina. Thank you both for lunch. I have other matters to attend to, however, I'm sure Lady Riley. Wait, please, there is one last thing I wanted to say. Lady Riley, I don't expect that you, you will forgive my actions, regardless of the reasons behind them. I only hope your opinion of me won't color your feelings towards the Cadonian people. Their ruler's fault are not their own. I'll always look out for the people of the Cordonian. After I nuke them to hell. <laughs> it's because of you, Constantine, I will slaughter your people. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> we're all going to hell. Okay, so if you laughed it out, you're going to hell with me. Um, you don't have anything to worry about. Thank you, Lady Riley. That is reassuring to hear. I'll begin the firing squad at one o'clock. You'll be the first of many. <laughs> shouldn't come as a surprise, Father. Riley is more than just a woman I love. She's intelligent and capable, and far more generous than you give her credit for. Continue to underestimate her if you must, but I have no doubt that she will be a remarkable queen. I hope time proves you right, Liam. Regina quietly places a hand on Constantine's arm. He nods stiffly to you as you follow Liam out of the room. Well, that could have gone worse. Riley, Liam! Told you we'd find him here. What's going on? Oh, not much. We just came to invite you to the best beer garden in Cordonia. 
Riley's in the clear. We're home in Cordonia. That calls for drinks, if you ask me. Anne's been reading this place's menu for the last hour. Don't judge. They have a lot of options. Think you can get away for a little while, Liam? Liam frowns thoughtfully. I have at least a dozen meetings this afternoon, but if you're willing to wait until the evening... I'll be there. Someone has to keep an eye on these two. Meaning Maxwell and Hannah? I don't think Riley was talking about me. Later, as the sun starts to set, you ride through the streets of Cordonia with Liam, Drake, Hannah, and Maxwell. Chatter and music are always already spilling over the garden's walls when you arrive. Wow, this place is happening. I guess we weren't the only ones who wanted to unwind. Who wants drinks? Oh, I, can I try the raspberry lambic? If you get a table, I'll see what I can do. While well, Hannah and Liam search for a table, Drake leads you and Maxwell over to the bar. This round's on me. You're buying us drinks? Riley! You should check if he has a fever! Ha uh ha. -huh. Can I be w in a giving mood for once? Not without explaining yourself. Fine, if you must know, I got a text from Savannah today. She's coming back to Cordonia. That is... fantastic. You two can finally spend time together again. Yeah, yeah, we can. It'll be good to catch up with her and get to really know Barty. Something tells me Bertrand and her made up. Since you're taking over as queen and she knows you're not a cutthroat biatch, um, something tells me that she feels more comfortable to come back now. I'm guessing you aren't the only person she and Barty are coming to see. You point to the far wall of the garden where Bertrand is sitting alone, staring into a pint of beer. Oh no, I'll uh, let you two handle this. Drake hurries off with for the drinks while you and Maxwell walk over to Bertrand's table. Uh, Lady Riley, Maxwell, I should have known you'd find me here. Didn't Maxwell tell you the news about me and Liam? I thought you'd be happy. I... I'm happy for you, Lady Riley. I apologize for not congratulating you sooner. Uh, but I suppose your... your own good fortune has me selfishly considering my for own future. Bertrand sighs, his gaze falling to the table. You notice that his phone is sitting beside the stein of beer. It's current back on as a picture of Savannah holding Barty. You know, Bertrand, Savannah's coming back to Cordonia. <clears throat> she is? Yeah, she could be here any day now. That's, uh, uh, that's good to know. I, I would be sure to give her plenty of space during her visit. While Bertrand takes a swig of his drink, Maxwell silently puts his head in his hands. Or you could try talking to her face to face. I consider myself lucky that she's even willing to text me. That way, I... You keep saying that you ruined things between you, but I don't know what had happened. You never even told me what you said to her, either. And I don't want to push, but don't we deserve to know? What really happened that night, Bertrand? Don't worry, Pixelberry's gonna charge us diamonds. Bertrand, he's a defeated sigh. Well... Oh my god, are we seriously not going to be charged diamonds for this? Okay. I'm I'm having a stroke. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Pixel Bears, be generous. <gasps> well, it was after the incident at Liam's bachelor party, I'd ridden to the address Maxwell had given me. <clears throat> Holy crap, I'm having a stroke. Now playing as Bertrand. You walk down a dim and dreary hallway to Savannah's door, knock on it with a shaky hands. Steady, Bertrand. Steady. Uh, you've thrown yourself five course feasts for royal royalty at, at moment's notice, and you can certainly handle one woman. The door opens. Bertrand. Uh, Savannah, I've. I've come to declare. But, taking in Savannah's beauty, stuns you into co incoherence. To declare what? 
my intentions, ingestions, and inventions. Well, it's been a while since a man did anything so gentlemanly for me. I've missed it. You have? Of course. Come in. Inside Savannah's home, you take in the sad couches touched up with homey dollies, the piles of folded baby laundry, and the bottles drying near the small sink. Savannah catches you staring. I know this isn't anything lavish or dignified like the Balmont Estate, but I make do. I didn't wish to offend you. you your home is quite uh, habitable. Savannah lifts an eyebrow, a small smile at the corner of her lips. Knowing you, I'd call that a compliment. I... I'd say you do know me, then. You sit across from Savannah, trying to compose yourself. You said you have something to say? No, something to declare. Um, I have. Clearing your throat, heart thundering in your chest, you speak. Savannah, I have put you in a position I... I never, ever intended... Me either, that's for sure. And had I a chance to do it again, I would abstain from the whole madness entirely. All of it. A blush creeps into your face. Uh, uh, no, I, I didn't mean uh, not out all of it. I, I do care for you. I just wish I could have have another go on, of that night. The the things I said. You mean when you told me we weren't be wouldn't couldn't be together because of your duty to House Beaumont? Among other things, yes. There's no reason you can't try again. Savannah rises and gestures for you to stand before. Against every instinct of propriety, you follow suit. What would you have said? would have said don't go. And then? And then I would have taken your hands in mine. Savannah steps forward and places her hands in yours. You feel your pulse quicken at the touch. And then? I would have said the words uh, I came all this way to say. Uh, Savannah, I... Something tells me baby crying. Good! <laughs> oh my god, it's always something, isn't it? Something to further the plot. To tune in next week. <laughs> <clears throat> the sound of crying from the bedroom interrupts you. Is that... Barty, one second. Simona ducks into the bedroom and comes out a moment later, holding your son in her arms. Barty, this is Bertrand. Bertrand, Barty. My son. Yeah, honey. As Barty meets your eyes, he smiles. Your heart warms in a way you never knew possible. Touch his hand. Reach out to touch Barty's hand, and his fingers close around yours holding tight. You struggle to contain the pride, the joy, the regret you feel all at once. <laughs> Start to step forward, drawn to him when... <laughs> <laughs> Children are ales! <laughs> Marty spits up milk, squirting some on your shirt. Oh! Oh, whoops. I'm so sorry. He, she pulls Barty away from you, holding him close, and you suddenly realize how little you know of babies and of all that Savannah's gone through. <clears throat> he seems to be all right now. You were going to say something? The weight of what you'd done to Savannah hits you hard, and your knees nearly buckle. Bertrand, are you okay? Uh, no, I'm... I'm not. I, I had a responsibility. A, a, a man of House Beaumont always fulfills his obligations. And, and I'm an obligation? Uh, yes. One that I failed. 
I see. Please, Savannah, you can rest assured that I will no longer sh shirk my duty. Your financial well-being is guaranteed as long as you need it. That's very generous, but is that really what you came here to say? Uh, uh, of course it is. House Belmont will be there for you, and for Balti. You obviously need the help. Excuse me? Uh, think about it, Savannah. You pull out a handkerchief to spot dry the stain on your shirt. <clears throat> Balti's life could greatly improve with my assistance, and I could give him more than this, and, and you... I'm sorry, Bertrand. You came here out of pity. You can just turn and leave. Uh, Savannah. I can assure you that we'll just manage just fine. Right, then. I... I... I'll go. Oh, you're an idiot. That went so well, and then you just... Oh, bro. I want to punch you myself right now. And yet I feel so sorry for you because what the hell, Bertrand? The moment lost, you turn from the apartment and leave and the sound of your son's crying echoing down the hall. Oh, now you're triggering me. Now playing as Riley. And that was that. I should have known she was uninterested when she didn't shake my hand or invite me to stay, but I still has to be part of her life. You're a fucking idiot. I should have known, but I'm a fool. Bertrand, that's all a misunderstanding. If you talk with her, save me your encouragements. Riley, let's give him some space for now. Okay, just know that there's hope. Bertrand stares into his drink as you walk away. You and Maxwell head over to where Hannah, Liam, and Olivia are waiting. You made it! Mm, so, Riley's design... Am I, am I losing my mind? Is that even a word? Dinged? Am I am I am I becoming illiterate all of a sudden? After being pulled into Bertrand's story, am I being am I okay? I'm gonna go with decided to join us. Olivia, I expect you to see it in a place like this. I missed you. Tonight's been lagging in the biting sarcastic department. Um, I missed you. I admit this gathering was growing dull without your senseless antics. Hey, our antics are the highest quality. Come on, Olivia, have a drink with us. Everyone clinks her glasses together and you take a sip of crisp, cool... Mmm, this is perfect. It's good to be home among friends. Mostly among friends. For your sake, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. As you all enjoy your drinks, a few patrons begin saying their goodbyes. Guests wander out of the garden in twos and threes and some wobblier than others. It's even later than I thought. Don't tell me you need to head back to the palace. Need to, not necessarily, but I probably should. Come on, Liam. We haven't even gone dancing yet. What about you, Riley? Do you want a, the party to stop here? And watch. Diamonds. Head home for the night. The homecoming ball is tomorrow. We'd better not stay up too late. You are the voice of wisdom, as always, Riley. Yeah, the voice of wisdom, forced by Pixelberry. Okay, this party is paused. For now. You did not stay at the beer garden with your friends. You walk home to the palace, enjoying the peaceful evening. Drake strolls along at the back of the group, humming faintly to himself. You need to chipper the hell down, sir. Drake, are you drunk? No way, Venti. I don't get drunk. Maybe you're drunk. Uh-huh. No, he's drunk with happiness. I'm just happy. We're home. Savannah's coming home. My point is, things are gonna get going good for everyone. You're gonna jinx us, dude. It's about time. Hey, how about a palace tour tonight? Just you, me, and old portraits of stuffy people. 
we're all staying in the palace. I've seen it. Nah, Vinti, you've seen the palace the royal family wants you to see. He leans in conspiratorially. I can show you the palace like you've never seen it before. Are we talking childhood Drake and Liam stories or secret rooms? Ooh, secret rooms? If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Good point. So, you coming or what? I would love to, but, uh, Diamond Edition. Sorry, Drake, but we just got back this morning, and I think we both could use a little rest. Always the responsible one, Vindy. Your loss. Stumbles on ahead of you, grinning. You catch him humming to himself occasionally throughout the walk home. The next morning, a knock wakes you from your bed in the palace. Let me guess. Maxwell and Bertrand are waiting outside when you open the door. With you guys around, I never have to worry about oversleeping. Good, because there are no slacking in House Belmont. Not when there's a homecoming ball to attend. I was hoping you'd say that. It's the day of the homecoming ball. What thrills and surprises does tonight have in store? Find out in the next chapter. Chica -chica. Wow, wow. Well, something tells me uh, Savannah will make a guest appearance. Bertrand will be continuing to be an idiot. And I don't know. I, I would like this story. It's all happy and uppity and it's nice and it's... I like the I like the um possibility of of shit happening. I want kind of like a, a a kidnapping the princess esque kind of thing to happen now. If you watch chapters, where you know something just happens like an assassination attempt, and then you and um, Bastine and all these other people must get to the root of who tried to have you assassinated. Or even Liam, perhaps. Or maybe his brother. Maybe there's a little plot of it's a family hit because, you know, the powers that be, the mysterious powers that be out there. Um, <clears throat> those are my suggestions. Those are things I really like to hear. So feel free, if you're agreeing with that, um, feel free to cough, cough, share with Pixelberry. I have a love-hate relationship with them. I, I love the work they do, but like I said, and it was very... Mm, if you watch my one video about the tweet that they replied to, and they're like, no, we know you support the, the altered copy, and then it's like, everyone else was like, no, because I'm having a phone with my tablet, or I'm having an issue with my phone, I'm having an issue with my tablet. So now they're like, a tech came out, and he's like, yeah, there is an issue. We're, we're updating the... the you know, game, and by the way, you all should now be able to have a stable game. Um, so it's like, it has nothing to do with emulators. <laughs> it's like, whoever is on Twitter should actually, like, send an apology and be like, I do apologize that I kind of brushed you off, and I, I do sincerely apologize. But I will take... A, a, a partial win. How about that? And we should all take a partial win because we all stood up. And for those of you who do did have issues, and those of you who didn't, and who were like, "Hey, this guy is having a genuine issue," and you guys retreated, shared, spoke up. I do thank you guys. You guys are the real champions. I just was a person with an issue along with many others. So once again, do thank you. Uh, with that being said, stay tuned. We have Endless Summer and High School Story. Um, check those out. I've already got um, Red Carpet Diaries up on the channel. So without further ado, go down description. You know what to do. Until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and thanks for watching. Peace!